Hi, my name is uh, John Philip Capello. Uh, I grew up in Brooklyn, New York. Went to Lafayette High School. From Lafayette High School, I met, which turned out to be a very influential man for me, the head of the athletic department, Mr. Pincus. I happened to be the captain of the soccer team in Lafayette. And him and I had a great relationship. And I found out that he was a chief petty officer in the United States Navy Reserves in Brooklyn. And he recruited me to join the reserves rather than be drafted. Korea had just ended and my brother had just come home and the first thing he told me was, Johnny, do not go into the army. So I decided I was going to go into the Navy when I had the chance. I was told that they needed sonar men. So I was sent to Key West, Florida. Uh, but after achieving good marks and everything, it was brought to my attention that my mathematical skills wasn't up to par. And that I could take a leave of absence from the school and go on to active duty aboard a ship if I wanted to, and yet still retain the idea of trying to become a sonar man. They said they needed desperately crewmen on a minesweeper, and she was heading for the Mediterranean. So I jumped on that idea, went to Charleston, and got aboard the USS Sagacity, which was within two weeks heading out across the Atlantic and going to the Mediterranean. The first few nights on her, I was so sick I wanted to die. It really rolls. Worse than a destroyer does. The event going across took us a little over two weeks. The maximum speed that the minesweeper could attain was 12 knots. And that's that really very fast, I'll tell you something. But we, we achieved, we made across, and our first glimpse of land was the Azor Islands. And that was beautiful to see. It looked like a, a quilt, a crazy quilt, just thrown across the ocean. Then we went to Gibraltar. We went into Gibraltar, we met up off the coast of Sicily with French, Italian, and British minesweepers. And what we did was we pulled patrol the Mediterranean for lost mines from the Second World War. So in total, my ship actually accounted for three mines that we popped. And that was an exhilarating experience because they actually exploded when we shot at them. And saying that they really truly was dangerous, you know, to prove the fact that these things are still in the ocean. And this was 1958, and they were still floating around. We got to visit a lot of the small islands in Greece and the Mediterranean and Sicily, which was my father's hometown. Uh, we stopped in Augusta. On my information about me, it said that I spoke some Italian. So they asked me if I wanted to volunteer to be a shore patrolman. A, a car came to the pier with the Carbonieri. And I introduced myself, and uh, they introduced themselves, and they said that I would be stationed with them at their, uh, their local station, the Carbonieri station in Augusta. And they made it clear to me, they gave me a list, and we went aboard ship, and I had the list with me, and I read the list, and it was a list of do's and don'ts. One of the do's was, there is a red light district. It's clearly marked. There you can find ladies of leisure. Do not, this is a don't, do not approach any other woman in the town or the village or on the street, on a bus. Do not talk to them at all. The Sicilian men are very, very jealous. Do not get overly drunk, you would be arrested, and if you're arrested, you miss ship. So what happened was, a lot of the guys, after going to the red light district, made their way to the different taverns and bars, and proceeded as sailors would, to get drunk. We get a phone call at the Carbonier station that there's an altercation going on in a local tavern. So we all jump in the cars, 
including an American officer, and we go down to this particular place. And sure enough, it is like out of a movie scene. You walk in and there's chairs and bottles flowing all over the place. And it seems that there was a bunch of American and British sailors in this Sicilian bar at the same time. And from what I understand, uh, an altercation began when some American sailor insulted the Queen by saying something nasty about her, and beer bottles started to fly. The uh, owner of the bar was really upset because there was quite a bit of damage. So the American officer and I went in, along with our shore patrol and uh, two carbonieres. And the carbonieres were talking to the owners and turned to me and told me what they said that they wanted to be repaid for all the damage that was done. And I took one of the American sailors aside, it was a big bosun's mate. He was kind of like the leader of the, the pack, I could see. And I took him aside and I'm small, I'm a small guy, I'm five foot six, and this guy was like six two. And I looked up and I said, listen, these carbonieres don't fuck around. They'll arrest you. They'll put you in jail. You'll be fined and you'll miss your ship. And the guy just looked at me and I says, the alternative is you come with us. We make sure that everything is paid for and you'll get some time on board ship rather than being arrested out here. And they did. They all surrendered their IDs and we all took them back to their ships. They had to all turn out their pockets to pay. I forgot how much it was, like $200 or so. And uh, that was my interaction with the locals. And then we went to Piraeus, Athens. And while we were in Piraeus, uh, there was a crisis that was carrying on in the Middle East and we were needed to board our ships. So we all got aboard our minesweeper and we're heading out and we had no idea where we're going. Nobody told us anything what was going on until the captain got on the horn and told us to look on the starboard side of the ship and sure enough, out there was the entire Sixth Fleet. And the captain turned to us and he says, all those ships of the Sixth Fleet are waiting for us to get there ahead of them so we could sweep the harbor of Lebanon in Beirut. When I was in Lebanon, we had to land a boat on the beach. I was the coxswain of that boat, the 26-foot whale boat. I had landed the landing beach officers, five officers, loaded to the hilt with weapons. Thompson submachine guns, 45s, carbines, you name it. You know what I, me and my crew had? We had pocket knives and we wore baseball caps. Well, they were on the steel cap. We landed them on the beach. We had to beach our boat. We're down in, in the sand. All of a sudden we hear all their weapons are being cocked. Something is approaching them. We look up and it was an umbrella. It was attached to a falafel wagon with a Coca-Cola sign on it with this Arabic guy pushing it down the <laughs> beach because people were on the beach bathing. He took one look at us and screamed, turned the falafel wagon and ran down the road and we just started laughing like crazy because the tension was so bad. But I mean, we laughed. And, you know, we were ready for combat, and I almost pissed my pants because I said, I got a pocket knife. <laughs> I said, what was I going to do? Finally, after four months, we secured the beaches, everything calmed down politically, and they allowed us to go ashore, and I had the best shore leave I ever had in my life. In Beirut, it was called the Paris of the Middle East. And you go into a bazaar that was going back to the 12th century. It was beautiful. What a beautiful city. And then from there, we made our way back to the States um, and did some more work with minesweepers, minesweepers, training other men. Uh, the other ship is uh, USS Yazoo. And we would go out with the deck loaded with mines all to the gunnel. And they were practice mines. You could 
see some in the water there. We will lay a minefield outside of Charleston, up towards North Carolina, then come back into port for a couple of days, and the minesweepers will go out and try and find those mines. Very dangerous work. So I completed my, my tour of duty on the Navy, came home, and within months, we had the Cuban Missile Crisis in 1962. And I'm looking on the television, live, watching this going on, and there on the TV is my old ship, the USS Sagacity, USS 469. And I felt so proud that, you know, my old crew in that ship was back on active duty again and helping in the United States. When I came home, I tried different things. Very difficult to get work in the 60s, early 60s. And I wound up being a house painter, which I enjoyed. And working as a house painter, I also learned how to do Trump Loy and do some painting. And did some work in the ecclesiastical restoration in the churches in Brooklyn and Manhattan with a firm. And turned out to be a good muralist. And that's one of my occupations that I did as a painter muralist. <clears throat> and worked in Brooklyn, had a, a studio in Brooklyn that I worked out of. And then eventually came out here on the East End to Sag Harbor about 30 years ago and uh, eventually became an artist. There was no uh, VFW activity in, in Brooklyn that I, I remember, or American Legion, I think there was only one that was around. And uh, I, at the time, I was too busy. I just wasn't interested. And it wasn't until I came to Sag Harbor and attended a Memorial Day parade out here. And my, my eyes opened up, and I saw the band, and the, heard the drums, and, and watched these veterans marching down Main Street along with guys in uniform, old men in the 60s, 70s, marching out there. And I said to myself, wow, I have to live in this place. I want to live here. And, and we bought a house out here. So I showed up for the Memorial Day Parade in my uniform. And I'm standing there by myself. And I have five ribbons on my chest, and a middle-aged Marine corporal walks up to me, Bob Early, the Early family. And he introduces himself, and we shake hands, and he looks at my chest, and he says, why are you wearing a Marine medal? So I said, are you referring to the Armed Forces Expeditionary Medal? He said, yes. He says, because I was in Lebanon, I was in Beirut, I was there. And he looked at me, shook my hand again, and he says, you belong with us in the VFW. And I'm also a member of Post 388 of the American Legion. Good men and proud to serve with him. Well, what I could tell is the young guys who are just coming out of the service now. My heart really goes out to you. So many of you are taking your own lives. But you volunteered, like I volunteered, like many of us volunteered to serve our country. If you have a problem, seek help. The VA is there, they'll help you. Joining a post helps, because then you're among men who understand what's going on with you.